Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm going to be taking you through our second part in our video series on distance on the earth. We're going to derive the formulas that are used on your formula sheet and work out where the magic number 111.2 kilometres comes from. Now, if you're part of a senior syllabus in Queensland, Western Australia, Victoria or Tasmania, this video is for you. Let's have a quick talk about the earth. You would recall that the earth is a massive sphere in space. Now, Scientists have worked out the approximate radius of our Earth and they've found that it's 6,371 kilometres. I'm not sure, exactly sure how they got that number. Quite possibly they sent a ship all the way around the world, found a circumference and worked backward to the radius um, because obviously no one's been to the complete centre of the Earth yet. However, we can actually use this number and work backwards to find the circumference. So the circumference, as you would recall from grade 8, is 2 times pi times the radius. So if we substitute that approximate value for our radius in, we get an approximate value for our Earth's circumference of 40,030 kilometres. Now, you don't need to remember this off by heart, but I'm just showing you today where the different numbers come from. Now, if you think about the Earth, we've got every circle on the Earth that would be represented by latitude or longitude. It has a centre somewhere deep inside the Earth. And our great circles are great big circles that have a radius that's right in the middle of the Earth. And that includes our equator and all our north-south longitude lines. Now, because our Earth is curved, the distance between two points is actually going to be part of a circle. It's represented by an arc, not a perfectly straight line. And you might recall when you worked out different angles inside a circle when you're in grade 8 and 9, and you worked out the length of the arc. Well, it's a fraction of the whole circumference. In fact, one degree of the Earth is one three hundred sixtieths of the circumference. So if we know what the circumference is, we can work out the length of one degree of longitude. So given that we already talked about that the circumference is 40,030 kilometres, if we divide that by 360, which is the same as multiplying it by one three hundred sixtieth, we come to our magic number of 111.2 kilometres. And it was that easy. So that's where that number actually comes from. So if you're in an exam and you were asked to find the circumference of the earth, you might be thinking to yourself, how on earth would I know how to do that? Well, you can actually take the information you've got about one degree of circumference. That's what the formula is. It's one degree. So if you know that the earth is 360 degrees, you can work out the circumference of the whole earth just from knowing that magic number. And that's why I'm explaining it to you today how to get there. Okay. So if we know the, different, the distance of one degree on that great circle, we can find any distance on the great circle, whether it's five degrees, 100 degrees, or 359 degrees. And we can work out what that would be. And here's the formula from the Queensland formula sheet, and that's where we get that magic number from. You might be required to memorise the formula, however, in your state. So it's always a good idea to know where it comes from and how to use it. And we modelled how to use it in our previous video. Okay, let's talk a little bit about small circles now. These are all our lines of latitude and these are also um, other circles that might be placed on the Earth. Now, these are all circles that have a radius that does not extend from the Earth's centre. Now, the only line of latitude it does not include is our equator because as previously mentioned, that's a great circle. So now let's talk about how we can find distances on a small circle. Now, because every one of those small circles has a different radius therefore it's going to have a different circumference so you might be thinking to yourself well how do I know what the, the radius or the circumference is going to be how do I work that out well we actually find that out in relation to the radius of the earth so let's have a look at this diagram here and I'm just going to talk you through what this diagram means so bear with me here c is the center of the whole earth now the radius extends in infinite number of directions in that circle. One of those extensions of the radius is the line BC. We can see that's a radius. We can also see out to the equator. Now, I haven't labelled that, but all the way out um, exactly horizontally from C is also another radius. Now, we've also got this latitude line where the point B is sitting, and its centre is A. So just having a look at that, you can see that circle um, where the radius AB, represented by the little letter R, that's a much smaller circle than our equator. And we've got Bs on that latitude line. So we want to find the circumference or the radius of this little circle, the small circle. Now we've got these three imaginary points forming a triangle inside the Earth. 
The radius is shown as little r. That's the radius of our latitude line. The radius of the Earth is that line BC. Now, sitting outside, we've got this angle that extends from B to C, our big radius, and then back out to the equator, and that's shown as angle theta. Now, that angle, you would recall, because it's outside the triangle, it's not going to help us find anything inside the triangle, or is it? Okay, we know that AB is a latitude line, and therefore, it's going to be parallel to the equator. We can use our knowledge about parallel lines all the way back from grade 8 to look at alternate angles, or as we would have called them back then, Z angles. So we can find that angle inside the triangle using the angle outside the triangle. Angle theta, that helps us find ABC, which is right inside here because it's parallel. So maybe you need to pause the video for a moment, have a think about the parallel lines and the alternate angles. So now we've got ourselves a triangle. We've got that radius BC, which is the center, the radius of the Earth. And using trigonometry, we can find the radius of that small circle. So I've extended that little triangle out here. We've got the radius of the Earth, which is CB, 6,371 kilometers. We've got that angle theta sitting inside the triangle. And we've got the value of the radius of the small circle that we want to find, the little letter R. So we've got an adjacent and we've got a hypotenuse. So using our knowledge of trigonometry, Sokotoa, we know that cosine uses an adjacent and a hypotenuse. So we can substitute the information that we've got into the cosine formula. Cosine of theta equals the radius divided by 6,371. Now, in this particular case, we want to find some distances, not angles. So we're going to try and make R the subject of our equation. And what that means is we're going to multiply both sides by 6,371. And we get a value for our radius is 6,371 multiplied by cosine theta. Now, we can expand that out now to find the circumference of that small circle. If we substitute that information we have about the radius into our formula 2 pi R. So now I've substituted that in, C equals 2 times pi times what we found, the value of R was 6,371 times cosine theta. And because 2 and pi are both numbers and 6,371 is a number, we can simplify that on our calculator and we end up with 40,030 multiplied by cosine theta. That gives us the circumference of our line of latitude. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I still have no idea what to do because I don't know what theta is. We'll get there, don't worry. Now, if I wanted to find one degree, the distance of one degree on that small circle, I know it's circumference, so I've got to divide that circumference by 360 degrees. So if I did that, I would end up with 111.2 cosine theta. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I've seen that somewhere before. Yes, you have. You've seen that on your formula sheet. The distance between two points on a line of latitude, a small circle, is 111.2 times cosine theta times the angular distance. Now you might be thinking, oh, I still don't know what theta is and I still don't know what the angular distance is. Well, cosine theta, the theta is your distance in angles from the equator to your line of latitude. It's basically your latitude degrees. So if you are 30 degrees north, you're 30 degrees north of the equator, that means your value for theta is 30. The angular distance is the difference in the longitude values of your two points. And that will help you work out the distance between the two points on your small circle. So that's where our magical number 111.2 comes from. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that is a whole lot of maths that's taking in circumference and radius and alternate angles and trigonometry. We didn't do any of that in grade 12. How am I supposed to know this? Well, the truth is you did it in grade 11, so it is technically considered to be prerequisite knowledge. And you've also been doing it since grade 8. Now, you're not going to be asked to derive the formula on your exam. It's not part of the syllabus. However, what you might be asked to do is find the circumference of the small circle that you're on. So if you know the latitude of that small circle, you know your value for theta, so you can find one degree and therefore you multiply that by 360. That will give you the circumference of your whole small circle. Using that, you could even work backwards to find your radius or even the diameter of that small circle if you needed to. So it's important to understand where the number comes from in case you get asked complex questions that involve that type of information. Well, that's all we have time for today, but do stay tuned on the channel to our next video when we're going to look at how to change between decimal degrees and degrees in minutes and seconds and back again 
manually and using the calculator. You're also going to want to watch our, our final video in the series looking at some complex questions from past exam papers. And the best way to do that is either to follow us on Facebook or like and subscribe the channel and click that notifications button. Well, you have a lovely day and all the best for your exams. See you later. Thank you.